David Sinclair proposes that aging is a disease, and that disease is treatable. If his theory is true, what implications do you think this has for society and science at whole? Adam. I think the theory needs a fair bit more work from my limited <laughs> understanding of it. I don't know if there's many people suggesting people will live substantially longer than the longest we're seeing people, as much as perhaps there's a chance to live a lot healthier for the period of time that we are here. Mm -hmm. I know individually I don't have any great desire to live to be 200 or 250 or anything like that, especially if it meant that everyone I ever cared about, I'd watch them die. Mm. But if I could live to an age and only about two weeks before that age go, I don't feel great now, I might just go off and die. <laughs> I, would, I would prefer that quality of healthy life over the actual end point of whatever that number was. The one little sidebar, there is a part of me that would love to live just for a week, 200 years from now, just to know what it is that we know. Yeah. Kids, kids, kids in year eight today are told stuff that the brightest minds who ever lived before 1930 mm. never knew. Mm. What it is that is just commonplace in the year 2300 blows my mind, but I don't necessarily want to live every day <laughs> until then to find out. <laughs> no. Mark Scott, you want to live forever? Certainly not. Um, <laughs> once is enough, I think. But, but, you know, I think some of our most exciting science um, is around and researchers are working on helping people live long lives and great lives. You know, I was talking with some scientists the other day. The, the work they are doing to help people with the diseases that often inflict the elderly, you know, glaucoma, macular degeneration, and our ability within our lifetime to be able to stop those diseases, arrest those diseases, well, that would be truly transformational. There's research that says, for many people, one of their greatest fears is going blind, losing their sight. It's kind of unimaginable the loss of agency in life that that brings, that, that we could do that so you could live a long life and a great life. I think that's... That's miraculous, and that's what our scientists are working on right now. Megan? <laughs> well, as an astronaut, I'm sacrificing myself for your long life because uh, <laughs> what uh, a lot of some of the research that happens on the International Space Station is actually into aging because astronauts age a lot more quickly um, under those microgravity conditions. Does that worry you? Uh, not really. I, I mean, I, there's a certain level of risk that you have to accept, and there are. I'm just excited about going to space, so uh, <laughs> I, I think. But I, I think those studies are are really important. I think they're really interesting. I think they they will help us in a way that no other kind of research can do. Um, the microgravity environment is really fascinating. But I think going back to what you were saying before, I think. Yes, it would be nice to live longer, but as long as everybody was living longer. So if we can do that in a way where all our family and friends are also living longer, then you've yeah. You've actually happy. lived in Antarctica very isolated, so you have some idea what it's like to be without all your people. Yeah, I spent a year in Antarctica, um, did a winter over there. I was isolated for nine months of that time. and had, uh, thanks to technology, good communication, so I could send plenty of WhatsApp messages, but it's not quite the same as actually being with those, those family and friends. So, you know, I would definitely hope that if I can live longer than everybody else around me can too. Um, Dr Foley. Well, it's really amazing to think that the humans are designed to live for 37 years if you look at some work that's been done on vertebrates. Mm -hmm. And so our health and medical outcomes is just mind-boggling. The fact that we're all here today uh, is because of science and health and medical research. Uh, pushing those boundaries is what humans are good at doing. You know, hum science is our, our superpower. It's actually allowing us to be who we are, building the stuff we have around us. It all comes out of the earth. It all comes out of our ability to manipulate things. So I never know what the future is going to hold. I never say uh, never it when it comes to science because the human mind is so amazing. I'm not worried about chat GPT because the creativity, the curiosity we have is actually going to lead us where we need to be.